Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, by George, you know we're right in the midst of the campaign and this, that, and the other here locally in the Portland metropolitan area, the largest school district in the in the country, in the state, in the whatever. The bottom line is that uh, they're getting something like they want they want to pass a bond measure for about eight hundred million dollars in IA and the basically brick and mortar. What that means, by the way, is just building buildings or whatever carpentry, whatever. But what about the kids? What happened to the kids? We're still the, the largest school district, and we've got the most failures in the state of Oregon. I mean, what's going on here? What happened to the money in the schools? What happened to the voc ed? What about on and on and on, these the things that really help kids and get them motivated, if you will, to learn? Well, guess what? Hey, I'm on, I'm on this, folks. We really got a situation here. We, we need a change here. They, they've got to go rewrite this thing. This thing is just not written right. It's just not right. So what I've done, just to make sure that this is not about anti, and this is still about kids. This show has always been about kids, the Oregon Voters Digest. And so the bottom line is that we're going to talk about that, and I'm looking for, the, I'm looking for those individuals who basically put this together to come to the show and give me that rationale as to why citizens should be supporting this piece. And I'll be right up front, as Grandpa Bruce is concerned, because I've got two kids in the Portland Public Schools, and I'm having problems right now because all of a sudden they, they get in some inferior situation. So what I'm going to do today is that uh, we're going to probably start off with uh, some options, if you will, so maybe some alternatives, some, uh, some other ideas besides where should they be spending this money aspect of it. And I, so I brought along with me someone that I've known, and I, in fact, uh, from a political standpoint, back when I, I, was, I, intro, I was introduced to this gentleman, and I got to learn a little bit more about education for the first time in my life. I really know what it is. So, but, uh, so what are we going to do today? We're going to... We're going to interview this gentleman, Art Robinson. You see Art right here, uh, to my left on your on your on the on the on the on your screen right now. Art's been here before, but we but what we're going to be doing right now. This is not quote running run for office. We're going to give him the opportunity to educate us about about educating kids across the board, Educa and especially poor kids and black kids. Uh, within our Portland Public School, within, within the sc whole school district. And hopefully he'll kind of reference some, some of the things that he shared with me. He's going to try to make this thing very interesting enough. But at the end of the day, we're talking about kids, folks. We're kids for our future, and it's very, very important. With that, Art, how you doing? Okay, how are you? Welcome aboard, bud. Good to see okay, you. Okay, good. Let's give, us, give us the spill. Well, you were talking about the Portland schools. Let's right. start with them. Uh, Portland spends, according to the documents that they publish, uh, $14,000 per student per year, per nine-month class. Uh, that works out to $560,000 per 30-student classroom per nine months. Are you paying that teacher $500,000? <laughs> The, 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 uh, if you take that $560,000, what's it cost? I don't know how well the teachers pay, but suppose with the PERS and all the perks and everything, it's 100000 okay. I'm not saying she gets that to take home, but maybe it costs that. And then maybe 20000 to rent the room. That's one hundred and twenty. Uh, I've still got uh, $440,000. The bottom line is, if you look at what they spend per student, and how much reaches the classroom? Not more than a third of the money reaches the classroom. That's what's wrong with the schools. Uh, 50 years ago, America had the finest schools in the world. But they, over the last 50 years, a political union bureaucrat machine hmm. of special interests has grown and grown and grown until it is taking more than two thirds of the education money away from the classroom. I'll illustrate another way. Uh, suppose that every uh, student in Portland got a voucher for $14,000. Uh, suppose it's a black family here in Multnomah County. Well, they could go together with another family, maybe two sam each family has two children. Well, they could go together and hire a $556,000 a year tutor for their students. Hmm. The four could have their own private tutor, just like a, a wealthy guy in New York. So 
uh, the there are lots of ways to educate. You mm -hmm. can use a private school. You can use a good public school. You can use a tutor. Uh, but the thing is, they don't have any choice. Now, there's been a big flap in D.C. recently because the very fine lady that President Trump uh, made her made into the education secretary went over to the D.C. schools. And she was treated very shabbily. They treated her like dirt. And while they were doing it, the chairman of the Black Caucus and Mr. Schumer, who's running the Democrat House group, uh, spoke very ill of her, too. They treated this woman like she was uh, hmm. ugly. And the reason was that she advocated school choice. She advocates that the resources that are spent on the students should flow to the students, and they should have their choice about where they go to school. Now, there are a lot of ways to do choice, and I'm not pushing one particular plan on her, but just to make it simple, in Portland, it's 14000 per student give each student $14,000 to spend on education wherever he can get the best education. Hmm. He can go to the best public school. He can go to a private school. His parents can hire a tutor, anything they want. <coughs> Academic education is pretty important. Students should be able to read, write, and do arithmetic. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, most uh, a majority of the students in Portland are not very good at those things. Mm -hmm. It's not the only part of education. Uh, education involves sports. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. Uh, maybe they want to spend a thousand dollars of their voucher on, on on being in the sports program at some school. Uh, they could all compete for the students that way. A school that gave the best deal to the athletes would have the best teams. Uh, voc ed, vocational education. Mm -hmm. A father might be sitting there saying, thinking about his his uh, sons or daughters, and saying, you know, I've taken, I've chosen a school that's going to have you reading, writing, and doing arithmetic by the time you're 10 years old, and we're going to turn you, we're going to train your mind. But I think it's also a good idea for you to get a work ethic and be able to do things with your hands. So 3,000 a year voucher is going to go for classes in welding and carpentry and, and things like that. That's very important. You know, uh, my kids grew up on a farm down in southern Oregon, mm -hmm. and there's always work on a farm. Mm -hmm. And although they have doctorates today, educationally, they're happiest when they're out doing work on the farm. <laughs> and it's a, it's a blessing to be able to do good work and, and to have a good work ethic. So a father might say, or a father and mother might say, well, $14,000. Uh, 10000 is going to make sure that you don't, can't just read and write, that you are superb at reading, writing, doing mathematics, all the things that will train your mind for any job you want on this planet. Wow. But the other 4,000, I think we'll put 3,000 into voc ed and 1,000 into sports. Or maybe we'll put 2,000 into voc ed, 1,000 into sports, and 1,000 into music. Because music's nice, too, and mm -hmm. I think I'd like to see you play mm -hmm. the piano. In other words, and, and the voters will be quite happy. The, the taxpayers are paying $14,000 for every student up here every year. And they are doing that because they want those students to have the best education. They don't want their money back. They want students who have been well trained back. Mm -hmm. Problem is, the educational establishment is taking two thirds of that money and feathering their own nest with it and not using it for education. Choice, putting the vouchers and the money in the hands of the, uh, the families, that only hurts one group. It hurts the group that has been riding on the backs of our American kids and their educations by sucking two-thirds of the money out of their educations mm. and spending it to feather its own nests. Mm. So we'd have a lot of bureaucrats on the street, we'd have a lot of union organizers on the street, and they'd have to find honest work. But our kids would benefit. And it's especially important uh, for the black students. Across the country, test after test after test proves two things. One, it proves that black students and white students do equally well when they have equal opportunity. It also proves that in this country today, although the white students are getting a much poorer education than they used to, the black students are getting even worse. And the reason for that is that when you have a limited resources, uh, it always takes a lot longer for those resources to reach the affluent than the poor. Mm -hmm. The, the, poor, the black students are generally, you know, in society, the, the black people have a little less money, a little less uh, uh, 
pull in the in the system, mm -hmm. and so what happens is the voters put in fourteen thousand, and the unions and bureaucrats and politicians and everybody steal ten of it, <laughs> and the four that goes on down the road to try to educate the student gets to the more affluent before yeah. it gets to the less mm -hmm. affluent, and that's not fair, but that's what happens. You can avoid that entirely. You just you got a student, K through 12 student. Here's his 14,000 voucher. Everybody gets the same voucher. End of the problem. They can all go out and compete, and you can bet that those black families get the idea in a big hurry. Yes, yes. Two families might say, "Hey, we want a tutor. We we watched uh, Mary Poppins and the uh, wealthy wealthy banker on Mary mm -hmm. Poppins had a tutor for a student, and we want a tutor. Fine." You have fifty thousand dollars. Go hire a tutor. Hmm. Four students. Hmm. I'll tell you, if you had a first-rate tutor, those four kids would be reading, writing, doing arithmetic, and probably doing calculus mm -hmm. by the time they were fifteen. There's mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, what is advocated uh, by the Secretary of Education, and I have used a very simple form of choice, where you just give the money to the family. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are other ways to do it, but the bottom line is the resources go to the family and the kids. Everybody gets the same. They go out and buy the educational opportunities for their children the best they can find in the marketplace, just like when they go shopping at, uh, for a, a new television set. They look all over to find the best deal. They go out and get the best deal. And, of course, the deals improve because quality sells. Instead of every kid has to go to a public school and take what he gets, mm -hmm. Uh, you can get the, the private schools would improve, the uh, tutoring system would would mm -hmm. expand. The public schools, that's fine; they can stay there mm -hmm. as long as they can compete successfully for those dollars. Mm -hmm. It's uh, long past the time when we should fix our schools. Uh, we had the best schools in the world 50 years ago. We don't anymore. The reason for that is primarily that the resources that are going into our schools have diminished, and only a third of the resources that we get, we pay in our taxes, reach the classroom. The other two thirds never gets there. And that is affecting, of course, the quality of the education, because two thirds of the resources are gone. You could have three teachers in there for the cost we're spending. Right. And in addition, it's an additional problem which creates a racial divide in our country, which is very bad, because we do have different levels of affluence, and therefore the money that is left for education uh, uh, reaches the less affluent later. And that causes a kind of uh, unintentional, but nevertheless institutional yes, racism yes. in education. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 it's, nothing could be more important than our nation than having well-educated young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, it's not a racial problem, it's a bureaucratic union special interest problem. Gradually, everybody's for the kids, so it's for the children, it's an easy sell. And they have sold uh, themselves even though they're not teachers. Uh, when my, my uncle was, my mother and my uncle were both public school teachers. My uncle comes back from World War II, and gets out of the Navy, and goes back to rural Iowa, and takes up teaching again. He taught a full load of classes, and they gave him a few bucks extra to be superintendent of schools. Hmm. The, those Iowa farmers were not going to pay some guy to sit at a desk and not teach. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> well, today, two-thirds of the money goes to things other than the classroom. Yeah. And that, that's the whole story. Mm -hmm. Uh, the people are happy to pay. They want every kid to have a, 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 the best chance possible. The voters want the best for the white, the black, the yellow, the brown. Th they don't care about the color of the mm -hmm. student's skin at all. Mm -hmm. They want to see young people walking around who have the best possible educations, the best possible work ethic, the best possible vocational skills, everything. And they're paying for it. Mm -hmm. But they're not getting it. And they're not getting it because of this educational establishment. Mm -hmm. And that establishment buys a lot of votes. So is unions, boy, yeah. uh, you go up against the education unions mm -hmm. when you go up for, for election in this state. Mm -hmm. And the unions own Mr. Richmond and Mr. Schumer. And they own a lot of congressmen. They own them in the sense that they can decide whether they're reelected or not. So they keep voting for this system. 
And what do you got? What do you got in Washington, D.C.? Some of the worst schools in the country. They pay 15000 per student in D.C. And most of the children, most of the young people who graduate from D.C. schools can't read and write. Mm. Uh, and think about it. Just think about the scene for a minute. All those monuments in Washington, that beautiful place. Mm. 535 congressmen and senators strutting around looking, looking important in their suits, getting their $170,000 salaries. While 50,000 students, young people, 67% black, hmm. are running around the streets that they're walking on, unable to read and write. Hmm. This is awful. Hmm. It's not the fault of the teachers. The teachers in the classrooms are doing their best, but only a third of the resources are reaching the classrooms. Hmm. So they can't, they can't do what mm -hmm. they need to. Mm -hmm. And in a at less affluent community, it's possible uh, even less reaches the classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Desi DeVos, the Secretary of Education, this fine woman that, must, that, that our, our president has, has appointed, can solve that problem overnight. She could just take all the education money or all the education resources and by any one of several means, which she would like to do, make sure that every kid in this country has an equal opportunity and that every dollar that's paid for education goes the student's education, mm -hmm. she could do that, We'd turn around our educational system in a moment, remove the racial divide in educational mm -hmm. ability, yeah. and the country would take off like a rocket. Let's talk a little bit about that racial divide. It, it comes up all the time nowadays, mm -hmm. especially, it's worse now than it was before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you, you make a good point. You make a good point about the, the education piece, because in all due respect, yeah. if, you're, if, you're not an edu if you're not educated, Mm -hmm. The only option you have is the criminal justice system. Yeah, and remember, and, and I, I like to put it this way. Go on. Um, half the people in our country are women. 25% mm -hmm. are old, and 10% are black. When an American, a normal American, walks down the street and passes a woman, does he think to himself, that person is inferior because she's a woman? Mm -hmm. Or does he think to himself, that person is inferior because he's old? Or does he think to himself, that person is inferior because he's black? Very, very few Americans think that way. They just don't. There are rednecks, there are misguided people that do, but they're very, very rare. Mm -hmm. They are not the cause of the racial problem in this mm -hmm. country. The cause is this institutional racism, especially in our schools, where black and white, the, the schools that are being misadministered so that only a third of the money goes to the classroom, they're being run by black and white and Hispanic. They're running, people of all races are running those schools, but the system has drifted to a point where uh, the schools are, the education part of the schools is desperately underfunded. Mm -hmm. Two thirds of the money is being wasted on those people. Mm -hmm. And because of the relative affluence in these communities, different races get different part of what's left. Mm -hmm. So after the unions and the bureaucrats and the politicos and the special interests have all grabbed theirs, the little bit that's left goes down to the classroom to some struggling teacher. <laughs> and she's struggling especially, not only because she doesn't have enough resources, but because all those bureaucrats are making life miserable for mm -hmm. her at the same time. And as it goes down that way, the less affluent uh, get less, and therefore you wind up with figures showing that that uh, the average uh, uh, black student performs mm -hmm. at about an eighth grade level compared mm -hmm. to the white student, mm -hmm. but all of them are, are, are performing several grades below what they mm -hmm. were 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have, you have true institutional racism in the schools. It's not intentional. These people are not doing it because they're black. <laughs> it's not that the students are black. <laughs> it's because they can get away with it better yeah, when the students the are poor. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, I think there's. I think it's it's completely obvious. Take the resources. Give every K through 12 kid in this country the same resources and let him spend them along with his parents. Choose the best educational opportunities, and you would see the educational improve, system improve and you see the kids' education has improved tremendously. Mm -hmm. That's what's needed. Okay. And that's why our education system's failing. And because the races, 
Hispanics, of course, many of them are poor. They come in in a certain way. The, the uh, black people are poor. And uh, this, this, actually, these uh, relative affluences would disappear, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, many fine black educa uh, educators, starting with Booker T. Washington right mm -hmm. after the Civil War, advocated much for the education of their people to remove the racial differences in affluence and, uh, and uh, quality of life. Mm -hmm. And we haven't reached that. I think we were close 50 years ago, and then this bureaucratic thing took over our schools. Now what they'll do, they'll say, well, 50 years ago, that's when we had segregation in the South. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm not advocating segregation. Mm -hmm. But my guess is that the blacks were getting a better education in the South in those days. It was wrong, of course, mm -hmm. to have them separate. I, I don't support that at all. But the, uh, the problem is today, the voters are generous, twelve to $15,000 yes, per student, yes. depending on the jurisdiction, and it doesn't go to the classroom. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't have to say, oh, well, well, uh, you don't know enough about mm -hmm. the schools. Just look at this, just add it up. Mm -hmm. 30 students, $15,000 mm -hmm. per student, mm -hmm. $450,000, how much you paying the teacher? Mm -hmm. And renting a room. Mm -hmm. Two-thirds does not go to the classroom. Mm -hmm. And that, that needs to end. The people who are getting that money instead of the teachers in the classrooms need to find honest work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, now, when, 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 I, when you start bringing these issues up, for instance, like I said, the, the whole issue of assimilation is huge, you know, the race divide aspect mm -hmm. of it. And you make a lot of sense along that particular line because if everyone is getting a good equal education, and when you start defining the definition of equal education, under what you are sharing from equal the standpoint, opportunity. E equal opportunity, I'm sorry, equal opportunity in, in education aspect of it, uh, you're, the, what you're talking to really makes a heck of a lot of sense because I think about the history of our schools, even when I was going to school, we had voc ed. Mm -hmm. we, we had voc ed. And it really helped, even in, in all due respect, it helped comprehension because I was very motivated, if you will, to want to, quote, read because guess what? I liked auto mechanics. Uh, I like I like metal work. I like welding and things of that nature. So consequently, I, I I've excelled. Right. In fact, I won a number of awards along that particular line. And we don't have that if today. We, if we had those vouchers today, like yes. I'm talking uh, yes. about. Yes. Yes. My father would look at his kid and he'd say, "You know that kid spends too much time on his iPhone and mm -hmm. playing computer games. Mm -hmm. What is he able to do? Three thousand a year voucher is going for welding and carpentry." <laughs> And some other vocab of your choice, electronics, if you like yeah, to play computer with electronics, repair. Yeah, let him repair. anything, yeah. I'm, at any profession. Anything, yeah. Uh, if he lived on a farm, the father yeah. would say, what, get out there and milk the cow and yeah. fix that fence. Yeah, right, right. But most people don't live on farms today, so he can say, well, you get out of the school and get something done. Let's see what you can do in mm -hmm. one of those vocab classes. And I think it's great that you're reading and writing mm -hmm. and your math skills are improving mm -hmm. and your mind is getting a good education. Mm -hmm. But you need a little more work ethic and ability with your hands. So mm -hmm. we're going to spend three thousand year voucher on that. Mm -hmm. And schools, yeah, they would have to advertise because the customers, the students, and their parents are now customers. They're not enslaved, you know, slaves that have to go to the public school and we pay anything the school demands. They're customers. And when one school says we got a great voc ed program and for a thousand dollars worth of your voucher we can give them a great sports program and for another thousand we can give them a good music program we still got nine thousand left over to spend on their on their minds mm -hmm. in terms of reading writing arithmetic mm -hmm. so forth put a good set of things like that together and advertise it and they have more students than they could hmm. than they could house hmm. 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 and uh so Basically, you have to have a, uh, yeah, yeah, a competitive right. marketplace. And you see what problems this gets us into. The country is built on equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if you don't give an equal opportunity in education, then you don't have equal skills. Mm -hmm. Then everybody starts to talk e about equality instead of equal opportunity. If after they come out of school, one got a better education than another because they didn't have the same opportunity, mm -hmm. Then you're trying to give them an equal life, and you, they don't equal opportunity doesn't work anymore because one can read and the other one can't. Mm -hmm. And then we get all this argument about equality throughout mm -hmm. the society. Mm -hmm. You have to give, basically, when that child's mind starts to be educated at the age of six, he needs an equal opportunity there, not an unequal opportunity 
till he's 18, and then we're going to try to fix it with equality. Mm -hmm. That isn't the answer. The answer mm -hmm. is equal opportunity Indeed. throughout your mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and then uh, people can excel mm -hmm. equally. Okay. Now, the other thing is that what I'm also hearing is that I'm getting a feel as if to say that uh, you're not really advocating. You tell me one way or the other. Are you advocating to close the public schools? No, no, not at all. Okay, no, how, do you, no. how do you how do you well, how do you say it, that? It's simple. The public schools. There's a bunch of teachers. Many of our teachers. We have hundreds of thousands of fine teachers. Uh, some of the people in the bureaucracy. I mean, they they need somebody to run the schools, make sure everything's working. But he may not need ten staff members. Maybe mm -hmm. he can work to mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. The schools would have to get lean. They'd have to provide a quality product. They'd have to see that the money was going directly to students and doing good work for the students. Any public school that can transform itself into a competitor. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Uh, and uh, attract the customers mm -hmm. should remain there. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of the public schools would remain open because many of the people, they there'd be people in those schools mm -hmm. that would say, hey, we we got to respond. Mm -hmm. They'd understand the problem and they'd fix it. Some of the public schools would probably close because they weren't able to respond to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But that's the best way to get quality, competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if Costco didn't provide a better product than the guy next door, Costco closes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether the store next door was public or private. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you had pri if you had public grocery stores mm -hmm. and they were running a better business than Safeway, Safeway would be out of business and you'd have public grocery mm -hmm. stores. So there's no, no reason why those schools would have to close, but they would be in a sense privatized because they would be competing now. They'd have the buildings, they'd have the teachers that they have, they'd have an organization, and if that organization could survive in the free market and attract enough of those vouchers, it would continue. Mm. It would have been basically capitalized by the public, mm. but it would have to continue running on the basis of the quality of work they give to the students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and then the other thing is I think about, I'm still going to that voc ed concept. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that was so productive. Right? Like you said, 50 years ago, yeah, things yeah. were just booming and whatever. Well, I, I took whatever. shop, everybody. Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. took shop, but, but no. why did we, well, again, I'm going to throw it on the table, even though it's redundant from your end of aspect of it, but why did we, why did we do the, this? The reason you lost it yes. is not because it wasn't good, it was because they were sucking money out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And they kind of had to leave the reading and the writing and the mm -hmm. arithmetic. Mm -hmm. But all the classrooms, uh, the, the parts of education that were very good, mm -hmm. they were sucking the money out of that to, build, mm -hmm. to, to, to pay for this ever-expanding unionized bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These, these this millions and millions. Do you know half, more than half the people in the teachers' union don't teach? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't teach, and they probably make twice what the teachers do. A lot of them. Yeah. So as the as the schools went down, 50 years ago we had the the great public schools, and as the these union bureaucratic political forces got a hold of the resources, mm -hmm. they sucked money out of education, and I think probably there was a less a lesser demand for shop. Than there were for English, mm -hmm. and and all they've got left now is kind of a, a shadow of what the schools are supposed mm -hmm. to be because they only spend a third of the money on the classroom. Wow. Well, hey, Art, this has been great. I tell you what, can you hang around for another thirty minutes? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, good. Well, I tell you what, this next segment, what I'm going to do, you know, he's talking about all this mm -hmm. stuff. Now, let's see what gives him that background that he's able to. That we can say that he's a certified person talking about what he's talking about. I'm just talking common sense. I think I like. I don't, it. I don't think <laughs> you got more than common sense. You did. He wants to talk sense. about credentials. No, uh, it, trust me, you it, you'll understand where he's being common nice sense. He's being nice about this thing. I, we'll, I, we're gonna come right back and get back to Art. Okay. Thanks, Art. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Okay, I guess we're back on at this point in time. Again, we're, we're interviewing Art Robinson, and this is my way of reacting to options, if you will, uh, to this, this major mass bond measure that we're faced with. Hey, look, I'm not anti-buildings anything, but if you're not building any kids in their minds, you know what I mean, their education, so that they can, so they can maintain and they can survive in this progressive society that we have here. If you can't read and comprehend, read, write, and literature, you're out of business, in all due respect. Yeah. And so, that, so it's, not about, it's not about to say, hey, I'm thinking about all the folks that put this piece together. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a very expensive piece. I mean, I read articles about, um, uh, from the standpoint that even building developers were paying, paying for the brochures. In some cases, oh, I, mean, I mean, Jesus, God, I can I can see all this still, but just like my wife told me when she saw the brochure, she said, she said, honey, I said, uh, she said, I got the brochure and I, I looked, she looked, I looked at it, she said, what's missing? And I'm looking at it, you know, and I'm, I'm and I even looked at the edge, trying to figure out what was going on, and she said, honey, there are no black kids in there. This is a, this this is the brochure for the Portland Public Schools, Portland Public Schools asking for over eight hundred million dollars for mortars, for, for, for buildings and whatever, and yet and still. And then the other thing we're talking about, that kind of a money aspect of it, and you think about what's happening here politically, just politically here in this town, they're gentrifying the, the black community. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, this to me looks like gentrifying the black kids and poor kids. Because a lot of the poor families, by the way, are moving to it. It's not just black folks. You know, it's, it's poor white folks that are being gentrified because they can't afford it. You know, one, Jeez. that probably was unintentional, but think about it. The black people up here are poor. Yeah. And they want a lot of money. Well, they may be appealing to the more affluent. Gee, well, maybe, maybe they're going to give Don't me vouchers. The, you know why? <laughs> I've got two grandkids in the Portland Public Schools, so uh -huh. I can ask for my money. I want my $14,000 per person. The truth was that kid. this money was all going to the school's yes. rooms yes. and was improving the lives yeah, of those I would, students. I would, hey, you wouldn't care whether there was a black face I on that thing or less. not. Yeah, I could care less. But you know the students aren't doing well, hey. and that's why you. And that's I'm, why and it I'm makes you mad. And I'm seeing, and you look, at, you look at all this homeless problem aspect. Of it. These are poor people. Mm -hmm. And look at those kids that are out there mm -hmm. struggling, trying to make it. Where do they go? So my point is that this, this is just this is not being no anti, no activist, or, or I'm not a terrorist or anything of that nature. The fact of the matter is I'm just a responsible person, and that's what I'm talking about this situation. So we seriously need to look at the, this kind of a situation, and that's why I've got Mr. Robinson here because I've known him for a year for years, if you will. But he's always been about education and informing and educating, and just to make sure he's got the proof. I'm going to let him share right up front here this time. We're going to talk about some other goodies and whatever. Too. I'm going to tell you what qualifies him to be sitting right here with him. I mean, he's the proof of the pudding right off All the right. bat. Tell us the story now. I'm tell us the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. How about your kids? The reason I'm qualified to say this yes. is because it's common sense and everybody can understand the truth of this. Okay. And I happen to have the facts, which I'm... But what about the in. kids? I mean, what about yeah, your what kids? what he wants you, me to do I'm is impressed. Brad. I'm impressed. I'm yeah. impressed. I'm have, impressed about those six, kids. I met those kids. I have six young children. Well, yes. they're not young anymore. Well, yeah, they're young, young men and women, yeah. They're young adults, and they were homeschooled. Homeschooled? Yeah, and five of them have doctorates, and one has a master's degree. That was in public school. Science, they got science that from, and engineering. They got that from public school, right? No, no, they got it from <laughs> homeschool. They got a good start because they were yeah. homeschooled. Yeah. And their mother started their homeschool. She died, but I continued it. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've, uh, they've, they're having wonderful lives because their minds are educated, uh, Two have degrees, PhDs in nuclear engineering, one in chemistry, two have doctorates in veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're very well-trained minds. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think when they're out building something on the farm or fixing a the fence, they're happier than they are mm -hmm. when they're doing mm -hmm. academic work. Mm -hmm. But having a well-trained mind can help you whether you're laying block or, yeah. or, uh, right. or, or yeah. ca calculating yeah. something in science. The, uh, the important thing is that everyone should have an equal opportunity yes. at a high quality education. Very much so. The children are not getting a high quality education, even the ones that have the better public schools compared to what we had in the mm -hmm. old days. Today, actually, they've slipped about two grades. Uh, three of my six children skipped the first two years of college and got their science degrees in two years. And so everybody says, gee, they're geniuses. No, they got a home school that was equal to about what I got when I went to school 50 years ago. Hmm. The K through 12 education is not only has slipped backwards two years. So the, what's the first two years of college today was pretty much what we got in high school mm -hmm. 50 mm -hmm. years ago. But the uh, and and it, it causes a lot of problems. Not only do our people have a suboptimum life because they don't have all the tools to go through life in, in the best way. 
but also causes a lot of sociological problems. Mm -hmm. We don't have a problem with, we don't really have a problem with individuals who are racist, because we don't have very many mm -hmm. of them. But, but this, this institutional, institutional racism that comes because you're, you're starving the schools of resources and therefore those that are a little more affluent mm -hmm. are better able to get what's left mm -hmm. has a big effect. And I, I quote here Walter Williams. He's a conservative uh, writer, commentator, highly respected conservative black man. He's talking about the way they were mistreating the Secretary of Education and about uh, Representative Richmond, who is head of the Black Caucus in Washington, who mm -hmm. was maligning her. He says, I suggest to Representative Richmond that if the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan were the Secretary of Education and wanted to sabotage black academic achievement, he couldn't find a better method for doing it than keeping our public school system as it is. Wow. And unfortunately, the man's, Makes sense. The man's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. And sure. so w we, you look out and you see uh, black communities on average are not as affluent. Mm -hmm. You don't see as many black men and women mm -hmm. in higher levels of, mm -hmm. of business. When you see them there, they're being treated just like everybody else, mm -hmm. but you don't see as many. You don't see them in science. You don't see as many in engineering. Uh, they're poorer. But why? They have the same ability as the whites. Mm -hmm. We have a wealth of information showing that black and white perform just as well in K-2 ed education the same if they're given the same opportunity. Mm -hmm. But this lack of equal opportunity then creates a econ economic divide, a social divide, and then the black people look up and say, hey, they prejudice against us. Mm -hmm. It's a system that's doing it to them. And that system isn't being done just by white people. When you see a school where two-thirds of the money is going to something else mm -hmm. than education, that school's being run by black, white, Hispanic yeah, people. Yeah. And not they're not doing it to the students because mm -hmm. they're black. Mm -hmm. They're just doing it because it's easier to deprive the poor of resources. So uh, the answer to this is very simple. Absolute equal opportunity. Equal opportunity. And equal opportunity is school choice. Mm -hmm. Take the resources give a voucher to every family, mm -hmm. one voucher for every student, mm -hmm. and they go out in the marketplace and find mm -hmm. the, spend that in the best way they can for their mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. and, you, and there are several ways to do that. I don't know just which method right, Secretary right, DeVos, right, 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 DeVos right, right. feels, and, and th this would have to be worked out politically, but the bottom line is the resources need to go to the students, and the students and their parents need to become the customers of the schools. Mm -hmm. Do that problem goes away. The only problem we have is we got to find jobs for all these administrators and yeah, union people yeah. that would be out of business. Well, hey, and I think they could find honest work. It's called retrain. <laughs> and be competitive. Maybe, maybe no, it's just competitive. I, you know? I'll tell you They'll what. Open up from on the way out the door, we'll give them a voucher so they can go get yeah, an yeah, education. Yeah, I mean, hey, I mean, hey, I mean, this is, <laughs> hey, I mean, I mean we, we've got to do something. I mean, well, when you start uh, looking at our ranking in this country. Nothing's more important than your nation than the is? education of your youth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is uh, failing. And you don't have to go into all the details. And right. They, they get you lost and we did this yeah. or that. Mm -hmm. It's a simple matter of economics. Mm -hmm. If you're spending half a million dollars mm -hmm. on one classroom with 30 kids, that pays a teacher and a classroom, where did all the rest of the money spent? Mm -hmm. It wasn't spent on the teacher and it wasn't spent on the classroom. Wow. It, it simply did not reach the classroom and the students and therefore suboptimum education reached them. We used to make another point too about the the, the other argument was the, the class size. You know that was a big oh yeah a big well yeah. the think class about, size think aspect. Think about this. Suppose they do this. this. That's why these kids aren't being educated. The class size. Oh baloney. I mean, but uh, the, the, I went. Uh, all the classes were thirty students when I went to school, and yeah. we got a great I'm education fifty years ago. But you realize that would be under control too. Yeah. If uh, you're passing out vouchers in D.C. and it's 15,000 per student, two uh, families that happen to have two students each could get together and the f two families could hire a $60,000 tutor for nine months yeah. to teach their four kids. Wow. You want a small class? That's fine. We'll get a small class. Four <laughs> students, $60,000 to pay somebody to teach for nine months? I think you get the best. Wow. That's the equivalent of an $80,000 income on an annualized basis. Mm. And they could get a person of that, of that quality right. Wow. Right. Right. for just their four students. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th th that that uh, 
it just illustrates how many resources there are. Right. And of course. How well, you know, another area that, that, that comes to mind is that uh, many times, you know, back when we were going to school, uh, teachers would ask us to take the homework and, and get yeah. the family involved, right? Yeah. Got me? Mm -hmm. Well, now today, unfortunately, a lot of those, a lot of those families today who have kids, mm -hmm. they fell through the crack. Well, and they, 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 their kids yeah. are coming home. They can't even help them with their homework. No, I know. Is but under this process, you're saying, yeah. suggesting that if you did the voucher piece aspect of it, they hire, hire a, student, uh, a tutor or whatever, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the parents just sitting around and, and listening to what's yeah, going well, on. Yeah, well, the parents would have the money. Right, right. And they have the choice. And another tutor. Private, public, any, all yeah, the school yeah. opportunities. And they, depending on their own resources yeah, and ability, sure. would decide which was best for their It'll kids. Dot the I's and cross the and, T's. And uh, some families uh, might be like ours. My wife and I were highly educated, and we homeschooled our kids. Right, right. But uh, many families don't have that, op that, that mm -hmm. opportunity. It's okay. They get somebody else to do it. Yeah. And another thing is, you know, the child should be an excellent reader by the time mm -hmm. he's seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm not graduate from high school unable mm -hmm. to read. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you'd uh, have a little bit of uh, customer feedback. Mm -hmm. If a kid went to school, the school you chose for a year, and he came home, he still couldn't read his books, you pick a different school. Mm -hmm. You change mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there's, there's no, no equal opportunity in a free market of education and let these people have let them go. Mm -hmm. Stop enslaving them in a system mm -hmm. uh, that is not educating their children and instead spending the money on things other than education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop enslaving the American children. Let them go. Let them take the resources that the taxpayers have been very willing to give for, the mm -hmm. for their education mm -hmm. and spend it in a way so that they get the best rather than that they get some uh, legally required unionized building that they have mm -hmm. to go into whether mm -hmm. there's a whether it's mm -hmm. good or not mm -hmm. well you know the, the other another main thing is that uh, when i hear you say uh is that when when a person like yourself at, at the level of education that you and your wife had and this that and the other uh, and they and your kids are successful they're considering you very conservative and so consequently here you are you got to be presenting something that's going to continue to keep me down under well, there's that kind of thing. Well, you know, the I, mindset. You know, well, but I you know that I ran. But I know for, better. I'm not, you, you know, right. I ran for political yes, office. Yes, I do. I ran yes, for Congress. Right, right, right. You know what happens? A white man runs for Congress in the Republican Party. Yes. Within uh, one week of his declaring for office, mm -hmm. he's declared a racist. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> you you are gonna if you're gonna be white in this country yeah. and be a Republican yeah. and run for office, you figure you're gonna carry a label racist right, around the right, back right. because that's what the Democrats do. Mm -hmm. They think they have enough well, misguided people that believe that, mm -hmm. but it's mm -hmm. not true. Wow, of wow. It's not true. That, that, that's, a, that's something that a lot of times uh, people get, get caught up in, if well, you will. But, wrong. you know, but we got to stay focused on, on what we're trying to yep. trying to do. Oh, look like we've got the key. Yep. This is community television, but the bottom line is that, and look, look, look at the engineers. They're, they're out here. See, that he, he's already gone to homeschool. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, but the bottom line is that that's, a, that's an issue I wanted to make sure that, you know, focus on your kids. That's really what we're talking about. This is what Art is talking about. It's, it's, we, we're in need, if you will, of educating our society. Right now, we're still considered the most powerful country in the world. Well, look, I, I, my, our family is not uh, educated because it was everything went well for no, us. No, no, no. My yeah. kid, six kids, their mother died when they were ages one and a half to 12. Mm. And we all had to educate each other and for the next pick it up. Ten, 10 years. You, you had to pick it up. And uh, that nobody gave us those educations. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, uh, but we were free to do what we wanted on mm -hmm. that Oregon farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not everyone has that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Most people live in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to work harder to get opportunities mm -hmm. for their children. But the taxpayers have paid. They're paying. In Portland, 14000 Across the nation, 12000 In D.C., mm -hmm. 15000 you start figuring what you can buy for that's that money, money. That's right. that's you right. can buy a wonderful that's educational right. that's opportunity that's right. That's right. for every person, right. every child in this country. A good example of that, folks, is that I can remember when I was in the Marine Corps and I came here as a Marine recruiter and naturally I would visit all the schools and whatever and I can still remember Jefferson High School. Mm -hmm. And Jefferson High School had a restaurant uh, in the school 
Mm -hmm. And they were training. It was a, it was a voc ed deal. Yeah. And they were training kids how to <laughs> how to have, operate. The whole idea mm -hmm. is to you get ready to go to college. So here's some monies that you can pick up, yeah. and you can go to go to the fast food and pick the money so you can still get your classes and whatever. And and and, uh, and now it's not there anymore. Well, when I went yeah. to college, you know, a lot of the kids worked their way through college as waiters. Yeah. They've got that's another problem. Wow, wow. <laughs> the but college still, has become but so still, expensive. You still you can't do that. And then I and then I'm thinking about some of the things that have happened to me in this town, okay? Yeah. And you know, I can remember when the custodians, for instance, and the definition of custodians that they were the ones that maintained the buildings. Mm -hmm. They maintained the aesthetics, they cut the yards, they glazed the windows, they fixed the roof, they I mean the whole nine yard. These guys were I mean I mean they did they played security, they were they were the bomb squad. They, I mean, they were there early in the morning. They opened up the school. They were just immaculate aspect of it. And then all of a sudden, one day, somebody comes up and they want to fire them all. Mm. They fired them all. Mm. And I'm just being straight up with you. The, the same union that they were in went up and took application of undocumented workers <laughs> and brought them into the system mm. and fired them. Mm. So consequently, that's why I was so angry on the lead deal, because in those discussions, that lead, that whole lead piece aspect of it, I went to one of those meetings mm -hmm. because I'm personally because yeah. I had two grandkids mm -hmm. in there. I went to one of those meetings. I saw all those mothers yelling about this lead in the deal and they, and they got the whole diocese there and everybody's trying to protect themselves and whatever. They didn't want to say anything. And all these women, were, were white women, mm -hmm. white women. And the bottom line, so I stood up and said, hey, give me a break. Let's talk about these custodians. And it's there. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, and then and so now, they didn't have the right filters in. Really? They didn't have the right filters. But the custodians that we fought for had uh, the right filters. They knew what was going on. They had the boiler makers. They were saving monies. The whole nine got rid of all those folks. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 I mean, that was during my time. I, I, the, the records are there. You can just look up in the Oregonian, the archives, the Oregon Historical Society, check out the deal. Yeah, also, it goes on and on and on and on. Think about the liability. What's going on here? Think about the liability. Everybody gets a voucher. They're all competing yep, in the schools. Keep going. And your kid winds up in a private school and turns out that there's too much lead in the water. Yeah. Boy, that private school is toast. Well, that, that, that an attorney comes on board yeah. by this time. Yeah. As a consequence, they'd be a lot more careful with the students, too. Oh, oh, very much so. But the public schools, it doesn't matter. You know, they've got public attorneys and so forth, and it's a tragedy, and you can all complain. Yes. But uh, in, a, in a privatized system with vouchers, it isn't complaints. It's legal liability oh. if you do something damaging to the student. Oh, oh. And, you know, and, and you think, and you know, even, even that in there, when they, when they made that decision and say, hey, it's a problem, mm -hmm. and say, so, okay, fine, now we're going to get bottled waters for these kids at the tune of about $70,000 a month to get bottled waters in Portland Public Schools. I always double that number. You know what I mean? Because they got a, you got administrative costs. They don't put all that other stuff in there. So I figured about about a hundred thousand dollars worth worth of water. But what think if they had a if you had a voc ed in the schools, maybe say plumbing and something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, maybe the kids, the senior kids, if going through the apprenticeship program, were getting together with some union folks. I, when I say union folks, I mean certified folks, union folks. All of a sudden, they're teaching these kids. Guess what? They could just basically say, okay, fine. We're going to run a clean pipe. From the from the streets, right? Mm -hmm. Because that, the city has responsibility at that point, and bring that clean pipe on, and 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 then put maybe four or five spigots. Well, the kids in the chemistry class could do assays on your water too. Yeah, you know. yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I mean, so 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 here we are. We get ready to spend a billion dollars, almost a billion dollars. Yeah, eight hundred million. A billion dollars, almost a billion dollars, to. Put two or three schools together. It doesn't make any sense, folks. And look, I, I mean, you probably had the best ideas, et cetera, et cetera, sitting around the table to come up with this number. But, you know, in all due respect, this is not going to do it for the classroom. It's not going to do it for our kids, your kids, if some of the, if some of the, those people who are making the decisions had any kids. It just blows your mind. You, you can just go, you can find too many faults here. Please go back to the table <laughs> and start thinking about what you did here. Come back with another plan. It's, it's, it's real simple. I, you, come Portland on, spending fourteen thousand yep, of your tax yep. money. Oh, that's for a lot students. of money. That's a lot of money. Four thousand reaches the classroom. The other ten thousand goes somewhere that has not little to do with education. Yes, yes, that's the yes. problem. Please, we, 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 we're in a we're in a dire strait at this point in time. If we're going to keep this country as powerful as it is, when I say powerful, we're productive. We're productive, and people are buying our products. Fair. It's yeah. not about gun power, this, that, and the other. It's about the resource power. That's what it's all about. And the only way we got there is, guess what, through what? The classroom. Mm -hmm. Fair? Yeah. We're not doing it today. That's right. 
We're not doing it today. So it's very, very important. And so the, the Arthur has been really been an excellent, excellent uh, guest today, uh, because like I said, it's not about being political about this piece. No, it's about the bottom line. Is it about the kids? This doesn't do. This doesn't educate the kids. It doesn't educate the kids, and we gets us deeper in the hole. We're already facing a budget problem here, in, in uh, you know, in the state. Yeah. We're, we're balanced budget kind of a state. They're begging for more money. Yeah, I mean, so what? Do, so what? Where are you going to get this eight, eight, uh, or this one billion dollars? We still have two bond measures mm -hmm. that we passed some time ago mm -hmm. that we still haven't paid yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. They just want more money. So and the children are the excuse. It's all for the children. Yes. But then you look at how much they actually spend on the children, and you see the story yes. is really it's for them, yes. Yes. not the children. Yes. And what about all those seniors? Uh, I e thinking about their dreams of a home and this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. living in the district. They gotta pay they gotta pay for that. Mm -hmm. And then they can't afford the house. They get gentrified too. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the monies, right? Yeah. So this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. They need to get back to the table and think about this thing. This this, is, this does not make any well, sense. Well they, they won't because the people who sent you that flyer are the ones that are spending the money now. Yes. So it just tells if, you where their if, minds are. If they have to compete in the marketplace, they'll either be doing something else or they won't be sending flyers right. like that. Right. Or like you said, a flyer about kids, right? Yeah. And they don't even have a black kid in it. Yeah. That, this is well, a very expensive flyer, folks. Look at this thing. This probably cost you about maybe a hundred thousand dollars to put this thing out. It depends on how many people this is, this is insulting yeah. and it doesn't talk about uh, or show pictures of the people who are going to be paying for it <laughs> like seniors you, you got to make adjustments for those things you know what i'm saying i mean i'm sitting there like well you know what can i say that's what we're talking about right now we're we're trying to figure out what it is now if you are out there and you and you're part and parcel of this problem i know there were other entities that uh that uh, that basically are supporting this problem. I noticed the Oregonians right here on the top of it. Well, they've got articles. The Oregonian Portland schools struggle with more potent toxic scare, lead paint. Okay, and we've got another NWCN publication. Lead level at Portland schools sink four times. Well, naturally you're gonna get excited about that. Folks are gonna get excited about that. But the fact of the matter is that's not the issue. At the end of the day, your kid's not gonna graduate from school. Then you've got the Huffington Post. They got an R in their support. OPB, Oregon Public Broadcasting. That's why I don't contribute anymore with, it, the, the, with so, those fake news stuff aspect of it. But my, the KGW is, is also a part of 99% of the point, but they were just reporting the news. They, I Hopefully, the media who basically published this stuff, hopefully you will go back to the table and ask the Portland Public Schools to share this in all due respect. Share this interview. Call this man. He's, he's here in Portland. Well, you, you see, the way that's written... If you oppose it, you must be supporting lead for the, in the in the water. What? Well, that's what they've done. Right, 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 they, right. They just want to get the lead out of the water, and if you oppose them, why, golly, you must want the kids to be poisoned with lead. Gee, well, that's tell that, the way it's written. Tell all those mothers that were up there yelling about this. In fact, they're using the they're using the same gathering of women mm -hmm. that got them to say, "Hey, found out that there was lead in the water." Beforehand, they had all of this administration, and they couldn't determine whether or not there was lead in the water. The lead was in the water because they fired the custodians and hired undocumented workers. Mm -hmm. Maybe some, maybe some of the others, but the fact that they hired undocumented workers, that's why the lead was in the water. So now they're using that on the back of these kids to say, give me the money, the bond. And at the end of the day, the kids don't get educated. Mm -hmm. New schools. I mean, it, it, you just you just get a little. And well, since I'm a grandpa, if lead I'm water, you better send the kids home. That's a dangerous place to be. Oh, oh very much so. And. <laughs> Or and, you know, find a school that doesn't have that problem. And then the other thing yeah. we're, we're concerned about is that, uh, the bottled water. There's always been an issue, too, about bottled water, water, whether or not it's, it, it's healthy for you. Got me? I wonder if they're picking up the right one. You know, did anyone check that out? Well, I, well we got a couple more minutes. I'd like for you to just kind of hit some of the highlighted points about well, the, uh, the whole issue of it's, it's, the voucher. It's pretty simple. Uh, I, I don't know what will happen in Washington, D.C., of course. I'm mm -hmm. not a, a part of that. But uh, President Trump has elected uh, or appointed a fine lady who wants to give the students a choice. She wants to take the resources in one way or another, give the students and their parents a choice so that they can be a customer that seeks the best education for their student. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they want to arrange that. She and the president want to arrange that so that every student, regardless of race, color, religion, 
everything. And this is not closing down public every schools, student, right? No, no. That, okay. That, so that every student gets an equal opportunity, okay. because he can choose. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, you, it isn't closing any institution. Right. It's saying to the institutions of learning, uh, if you provide the best product, you will thrive. Mm -hmm. If you provide inferior product, you won't. Mm -hmm. And we are unwilling to have an inferior product when it comes to our children's education. Mm -hmm. Not just my children, but all the people my children will interact with. My children, if they get a good education, will still be disadvantaged if the people around them don't have good educations. So it's, it's a national matter. Mm -hmm. uh, Turning these schools into where somewhere where the parents and the students can choose the best and have an equal opportunity in terms of resources to choose the best uh, would change our schools for the better. What we have today is a system where the students are forced to go to the school regardless of whether it is providing the best education for them. Mm -hmm. And there's no feedback. There's no reason why these schools should stop wasting all this money. There's no reason why they should give the kids a better education. There's no reason why they shouldn't ban books in Portland but for some political reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason for them to provide a quality education because the students are forced to go there regardless. Choice, which is what they advocate, and that's why the, the politicians who are owned by the educational establishment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are against them, is that the, those people want to give the students a choice so they have equal opportunity at the age of six and seven and nine and ten. And that means they will become adults with the skills to thrive in a nation that gives them equal opportunity as adults. If they do not have equal opportunity in the first 12 years, in K through 12, then they will not have equal abilities and consequently uh, our, uh, our free market system fails, and you're talking about making people equal, and the only way you can do that is by stealing resources from right. everybody and putting them in a pot. All right, thank you very much for being here thank with you. us. And by the way, I'm sure he'd be available if he had Portland Public School want to go and make a presentation for the board. Would you be available? Yeah, I don't think that invitation That's will be okay. Coming. I'll be with you. Okay, <laughs> fine. Thanks very much, Art. Appreciate it, folks. Hey, like I said, make sure you check out this bond measure piece. Ask the questions, please. Ask the question, where is this billion dollars going to go? Is it going to go into the classroom? Okay. Take care. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.